All right, let's move on. What is that? Uh, well, you know, is that a super chat? I don't know if that counts as a super chat, but we'll go with it since it's crafty. Browser will instantly remove your zero prep by expanding your mind. Expand your mind. Increasing social acumen and curing you of gross nerd tendencies. <laughs> you said remove okay. instead of improve, but yeah. What's that? You said remove instead of improve. Oh, did I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, but I agree with the sentiment that you should remove your uh, curing your gross nerd tendency. That's important. All right, well, in segment two, we're going to talk about the misconceptions of zero prep. We're going to start with the basic expert here. So, all right, let's just knock it out. Of course, we may have answered this all in the last segment, but uh, yeah. what are well, some common misconceptions about zero prep GMing that you've encountered? Uh, for me, it's, it's again, like... Violent solves everything is complaining about it in chat right now. He says, uh, use redefining the word zero. Like, again, we colloquially know what the word zero means, as I mentioned before. Like, we know that it means spending a couple hours, uh, prepping a dungeon or something like that. It doesn't mean because I've had people, for instance, say to me, like, uh, when I've responded to them and be like, you know, I watched a movie, like, I was watching a, a movie or I was reading a book, I was reading a Conan story or something like that, and it sparked my imagination for something that's going to happen in the next session, you know, like, Oh, well that's prep. And it's like, well, I was reading a book anyways. Like that's not, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, I was going to read the Conan story anyways. It just so happened that it, it gave me something to add to my lore toolbox for the game that I'm going to have on Thursday night, you know? Yeah. So like that, that's completely different. And we know everyone knows, even the people that bring up this charge, they <laughs> definitionally know that that is different from, well, I got to spend two hours building the dungeon and stocking the shop. So, uh, yeah, but how do I know um, if? How, but how do I know if the long sword is available? Yeah, if you don't prep it beforehand. <laughs> so, since but, you put it on screen earlier, I know that violence solves everything is very uh, hung up on the semantics of zero. I already said at the beginning it's a bit of a meme term. It's a bit hy hyperbolic. So I don't know I, if if you want to get like that autistic about it, that's on you, dude. Like I already no, well, admitted fair, that, 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 uh, that was me too. Yeah. Like I said before, yeah. Crossface made that comment on on your Gilded server. If you'd asked me about zero prep, I, I'd been I'd absolutely one hundred percent say you can do it as a session. You cannot do it as a campaign, or it will turn into clown shoes. No ifs, ands, or buts. It will because literally, if you have zero prep and do that over the course of the year, it is going entropy will set in and it's going to turn into chaos. But when you, you mix the concept of zero prep, and I'm not saying mix like you guys are doing anything wrong. I'm just saying, but when you take it, it's like, hold on, hold on. Zero prep means I understand the world. I understand the game. I understand already in my head or on some notes that I made based on the last session. Did you play the last session? Yeah, that's prep. No. Like, yeah, you're like the, based on what's already happened, now I can go forward. I get it in a much, in, in a, in a, in a different concept, uh, in a concept, which yeah. is why I, I'm glad yeah. we're having this. Uh, uh, and I've got a follow up for John here in just a second. But it's why I'm glad we're having this discussion, because I think a lot of people, myself included, can be better educated on the concept of this. And if and we still don't this, like it, we yeah. still don't like it. I'm having this discussion because we called it zero prep. And then people were like, wait a minute. And now we're having this discussion. If we called it sometimes prep or if we like <laughs> talked about it in vagaries, nobody Minimal would have prep. cared. Light so, prep, yeah. 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 So, like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I prep 16 hours for one session. That's the minimum, right? It's like, well, then you don't get it. It's like, <laughs> so, so let, let me follow this up with what I just said uh, uh, for John, basic expert here. Uh, how do you respond to the belief that zero prep jamming leads to disorganized or chaotic sessions? Uh, by the fact that that's never happened in any of my games <laughs> ever. Uh, I've been running my white box game for months now. And it's not turned into clown shoes. It's not been ridiculous. It's been a very serious game, you know. Wars against orcs, um, children being kidnapped by vampires, and players trying to go after them, and fighting werewolves and um, kobolds that are raiding villages and things like that. A dragon that has uh, been demanding sacrifices of a nomadic tribal group in the desert, and the players interfered with that. They took the the, the virginal sacrifice away from the dragon. So now that dragon's probably pretty pissed and we have to still adjudicate the outcomes of that in the game so far. So, and all this is like not stuff that I prepped or planned. It just happened in the game. And I don't know, does 
to, I would say to the, to the skeptic, like, does any of that sound like clown shoes nonsense to you? And I'm not using clown shoes to call you out too, Max. I got you. I got you. We've we've, we've memed the term now. I got it. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Uh, But you know, like that, it, does that sound ridiculous or does that sound like, Oh, that just sounds like a series of like uh Conan adventures or, or something like that in your, in your very like prototypical style fantasy game. So I would say that, that it, that just, just doing it um, has made it so that it, it, and knowing what I'm doing has, has proven the point that like it never, it doesn't, it, it's not guaranteed to turn into that. It can sure, but your prepped game can turn into ridiculousness too, mm. you know? It could very easily too. So I, I don't yep. like this idea that, yeah, I've been in games. I've ran games where it got ridiculous that were high yeah. prep. And so to me, it's like, uh, why, why hold me to some standard or gotcha that your mode of prepping or your mode of, uh, doing games can't account for either. Like that seems kind yeah. of, uh, that, that, I'll, I'll, that, yeah. sorry, that sorry, seems like special, that's the special pleading logical fallacy. If we're going to use debate yeah. terms, you know, so how many times do we see on Reddit people complain that they have like this meticulously crafted like plot and then that weird gonzo stupid players like ruin it? So yeah, again, like this happens with uh f- with high prep games too. So it it eventually just comes down to having the right players for the right game. Yeah, and I think like, okay. not only like not only if you have like the I plotted game, right? Sometimes it almost makes it more likely because when the player fill the rails, they will want to fucking tear them out, tear them yeah. out, right? So well, let, let, the let, let, let me let me get the questions out to everybody first and then we can we can do the cross talk in, in the end here otherwise i'm going to forget where we are <laughs> so uh mr max Bouvant. yeah uh same question for you what are some common misconceptions about zero prep game mastering that you've encountered well like you said we, we encountered a lot of them right right now right but like yeah. zero prep doesn't mean like you make tabula rasa and you forget everything you ever knew ever right mm-hmm. just like no, it's completely fresh and new. And I like, you no, know, we all come up with some understanding of the world, how things work in reality, but also how things work in some different kind of fantastical or fictional setting that we're familiar with, right? We can't, you're allowed to use that. You're allowed to use inspiration from movie and stuff like that, right? That's not prep. Like John said, you know, like I, I was watching that fucking movie or reading that books anyway, right? Uh, so yeah, that, that's that, that's a big con- like people like like they want to put that on a, like on a like oh what you need to do is like it's completely like I say like oh we're gonna do a game inspired by the this historical event or whatever this or that historical event right whatever right just like well now that you have to research the historical event that's prep and stuff like that well like don't be fucking stupid right just <laughs> you know those are things we know right this thing we never learned at school and stuff like that you're allowed to use that use that as your prep like use stuff that you know use stuff that like like oh no I'm gonna create this conflict in a world that is completely made up from scratch with nothing going on and that's completely different then you're fucking like making this huge task for yourself that is not worth it it's not going to bring anything good to the game it's only it's only going like, to always like stop your player asking them question about the world and stuff like that because they cannot just make assumption or they just can they cannot just like figure out what you're talking about right just like so zero prep doesn't mean like and it doesn't have to mean like oh everything can go right everything is fine no you, you can have like you can have boundary you can have like understanding so so well no i don't want to do that i don't want to do that um so what are your strategies for overcoming the misconception that zero prep is just winging it without any structure at all uh, i don't know i think well, there's some people you can't well, they're just not going to get it yeah. you know like yeah. don't don't throw your pearls before swine you know like uh, I've, I've kind of had to learn that like all right I've, I've tried to explain this concept to you you're literally telling me that everything that i've done for like the last two years is impossible yet i've been doing it so this conversation is pointless <laughs> some people are just <laughs> honest right they're just yeah. like they're, they're, they come with a, with a co- conclusion that they already like decided they don't want to try it they don't want to learn they don't want to or they don't want to even like humor you right just like but uh disorganized you said no, but, so, uh, so what are you, what are your strategies for overcoming the misconception that zero prep is winging offer, it or just winging okay. it without any structure well and i'm asking strategy... you this one because you've implied that there is structure involved there but you're way more on the pure role play mm. side with less tables and so forth that's why i'm 
asking yeah, you this and one. We, and, and we like like I said, we have some rules that we define, right? We have like there's a rules of the game, but we also have like our rules for the table, right? We decide those like kind of session zero and stuff like that. But also we because we're a group that we play often together, we have an under understanding, right? We have an understanding that you don't fucking come up with like stuff that doesn't make sense or just like just try to derail the game, like try to create something just to be funny, right? We have those understanding. We need to have rules and my strategy, like we put game online and we talk about the game. We talk about what work and what doesn't work and what we can improve, right? We go back and look at our own game and we talk about like, oh, there, you know, should have done that here, right? We're very self-critical in that sense. That's the strategy that we want to, that's how we're trying to dismiss, dismystify this thing that is just going to be chaos. Like, look at us do it. <laughs> like, we're fucking doing it live for you folks. Like, we can do it. We can, like, and it's not going to be like full chaos, right? And some people, like, uh, I'm probably like the most zero prep of my group as well. Because the other guys, like, they like to have, like, a bank of image that they're going to drop on, stuff like that. Like, so that's kind of prep, but it's also prep you can do, like, once and, right, just, like, uh, yeah. Okay. So, did so, I answer the question? <laughs> I lost yeah, my yeah, yeah, yes, yes, you did. And uh, I'm going to move on to uh, to Victor so he gets a chance now, and then we'll open it up to everybody. Um, so, Victor, what are some common misconceptions about zero prep game mastering that you've encountered? Uh one misconception, and it kind of is a misconception about using random tables and stuff in general, is that people think that if you use, say, random encounters, that it's just like the Final Fantasy music starts playing, and all of a sudden there's just like a dragon just like fades yeah. in like two feet in front of you, and now the GM is like, <laughs> okay, fight, guy. Oh, sorry, I hit my microphone. <laughs> fight, guys. Uh, and no, you're still, you can still curate those very simple random tables, like, oh, a troll shows up. You can still curate those using your, uh, your experience with, like, you know, the genre, with, like, all the books you've had, just your creativity, to have, like, a really interesting, fun, like, role-playing account. I've done it, like, constantly. I have, like, an example of, uh, I rolled, like, a single revenant that just, like, appeared on, like, a mountain path. That revenant turned into, like, an immortal warrior that could only be defeated in, like, honorable combat, and he turned into, like, a major, sto like, arc for, like, the fighter. Uh, uh, PC in the party, and that was just from a random wall that you know I just decided to do because it came up. So, yeah, you, you're still you you still have the ability to make this stuff interesting, and it's not just like random encounters on a Final Fantasy map. Yeah, uh, I'm going to jump in because you said something that I think is absolutely spot on. I think that even prep game masters do this poorly sometimes, and that's mm -hmm. the idea. You roll a red dragon. The party's mm -hmm. level three. Now, first of all, should that be on the chart? It usually isn't, but you can get some weird stuff depending on what chart you're rolling on. That doesn't mean, like you said, that this is a Street Fighter game. Also, in <laughs> round one, oi! Dun, 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 you know, wait, 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 hold on. That red dragon could be a polymorphed uh, uh, female in the woods. It's help me, help me. Um, yeah. That could be, it could be flying overhead, yeah. destroying a village that you might be on the way towards, and you have to decide, hmm, do we want to go there or do we not? It could be something you walk into where it says, or where you're in my domain, drop three magic items and you can continue to go or you become my snack. There's so many different things that can happen there yeah. that it doesn't just have to be a, a street fighter uh, uh, you know, combat. So, yeah, I agree with you 100 percent on that. So yeah. with that in mind, then how do you dispel and this is a follow up questions for you? How, how do you dispel the myth that zero prep game mastering is only for experienced game masters? Uh, well, was that the original question? Only for only for experienced. So, game how do you dispel masters? the myth that zero prep game mastering is only for experienced game masters? It's been said a uh, couple times here that you well, know. I don't, it, think, it, I don't think it's a myth though. So that's oh, like because okay. I do think it's uh, you have to have at least a little bit of experience to to okay. uh, attempt uh, the whole zero prep thing. That's why we're also not saying that it's a one true wayism, and that's why we're also saying that it doesn't fit every uh, every game. Um, when we first started talking about, we were specifically talking about old school Dungeons and Dragons. We weren't mm -hmm. talking about uh, the Call of Cthulhu. We weren't talking about Savage mm -hmm. Worlds. We weren't talking about GURPS. You know, th those all might have completely different uh, things you have to do to have a proper game. But when it comes to old school D and D, uh, the tools are right there to like one zero prep. It's just you. It's up to you to like learn the skills to use them. So. You that's, said, that's... I agree with you, uh, with you on that one, Victor. Yeah. I think yeah. zero prep is for, even if you're not ex an experience, you can just fucking zero prep a session. It might not be a banger, mm -hmm. no. but that's all right. It's not, that's, we're playing a game. It doesn't yeah. matter. Sometimes yeah. you're going to fucking miss, right? And then yeah. the next one is going to be better. 
You know, it's like well, that's also part of like learning their skills, though. Just being exactly that's being you willing to take your lumps and having bad games. Yeah. I've had plenty of bad games. Uh, some would say I, all my games are bad, but <laughs> I mean, I've had bad, I've had bad prep <laughs> games that weren't great. So yeah, you know, they, uh, yeah, you win exactly. some, you lose some. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know it's, it's funny about that is you know we were talking behind the scenes, or I was talking with somebody behind the scenes. Some of my most notable stories that you guys have heard over and over again on here about weird things that have happened were things that have gone so far off the rails, they were literally zero prep. Because there's nothing I could have done to, to plan for them other than understanding the world. So, and, and how did I roll with those punches? <laughs> you just got to do it. You know, some went well, some didn't go well. You know? So I, I agree with you. And yeah, that, that question maybe is misworded in that. But uh, I really wanted to point home in case there was that, that fact. There. And by the way, you guys feel free to jump in on this. And is, I mean, if there's a way that an inexperienced person can do this or or should you know maybe look at it conceptually like you know what i played a few games but i've never game master before but if i can do zero prep maybe i can actually you know be a game master like john don't have a lot of time but now maybe yeah. i do have the time for it just just try it and yeah, you know, maybe yeah. you'll like it and maybe you'll suck at first but you still like it and then you're willing right. to uh, work at it and yeah i don't know and that's also, that's also for the player right you understand that you're yeah. there to play a game and the, then the game master is the player as well he's there to have fun as well he's not just there he's not yeah. there to entertain you right it doesn't matter like you don't have to uphold them to this like super high standard that well mm, you're not my mercer i wasn't totally immersed in, a, in like first also the player it's your fault as well were you active as a player where did you brought like something to the plot, to, to the to the action, to the story, right? Just like you also have responsibility as a player. It's not only on the GM. Like you have to have players that understand that as well, right? You have to make that understand to your player. I'm not there to take you on a ride. We're going somewhere together, but you have to walk yourself, right? Yeah, I'm not gonna fucking carry yeah. up the mountain. And as a GM, like, yeah, you don't, you don't like. They're not gonna be all banger guys. Yeah, that's all right. So, that's fine. So, We're just playing so a game. When I first started DMing, I, I fully bought into the whole you have to have like this thick of a folder of lore. <laughs> you have to do be yeah. able to do NPC voices and stuff. And it gave me like massive anxiety. Like I, I like mm -hmm. I it took me a while to even get o like over that fact. And the only reason I got over it is because eventually I just said fuck it and I just started drinking before a game. And then <laughs> I just was like, let's see where let's see where the dice fall, guy. Uh, exactly. guys. And uh, that some of my best games just came from just having really no uh, no real uh, planned thing of what we're gonna do. Uh, just like all, uh, we're on the map, uh, characters are exploring. They run across a dungeon. They run across an NPC, and we'll see where it goes. So, and yeah, cheers. My yeah. no, my wife found this here in Alabama. That's what I was telling everybody is my favorite beer hmm. from Germany. Yeah. There you go. She found it here. <laughs> Like I was like, yes, you're getting some. Um, all I, right. I would say though, just to tag on that too, is one thing too is is try solo gaming. Even just try yeah. simulating a situation. You don't have to do so a whole like solo game, but maybe it's sort of like I want to practice rolling up some random encounters, or I want to practice generating some hex hexes on the on the map, or I want to practice like a something like that. You know, because that even if you're not like oh, i don't want a solo game it's, it's boring it's whatever uh you you still have um you, you're still learning where tables are you're still learning where the tools you need are and i think that that's incredibly valuable get little like uh, those little tab markers and you know stick them in the book so you know where you can remember where they're at but i think that that's also a good way of doing it uh, as well i, I, I solo game use an actual role-playing game so the first time i run a game Mm -hmm. Like, let me just pick one. Oh, I got absolute power sitting next to me since we're going to be starting to talk about that on Sunday. Um, the first time I run the game, I actually run it for myself. Yeah. Just to get, you, you know. Yeah. You kind of get a feel for it, at least yeah. like a taste of like, this is what it's going to feel like. And so then I can, you start to see things that you can look out for and smooth and, over so that at the table, it's not as awkward, you know. <laughs> and I also know for a fact that John uses that to generate a, a large chunk of the world beforehand. I guess that's prep. Which I, yeah, game. which I guess it's prep. But All right, at the same time, you guys shooting. don't do zero prep. But, uh, I'm but, quitting. Uh, no, but <laughs> at the same time, you're actually engaging with the mechanics you're playing the game. You're not just sitting there in your own heads, like writing in, in yeah. your notebook. So. And uh, are we still in the misconception of zero of about zero prep? Well, I was about to go into the next uh, question, but uh, yes, if it's still on what we've been talking about, go ahead. I, w I wanted to reply to something that you said. I think I don't. I, I guess when it was you were asking question to uh, to John or something like that about like people that do prep and and we talk about that with like uh, 
game that go wrong when the when the prep is done, right? And you talk about a lot about like uh, keeping the game consistent and avoiding the clown shooting. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of prep game, a lot of people that do the, the world building stuff, right? Those games become ridiculous often time, I find, because like people want to create this whole world that is completely original, totally different, stuff like that. And then they leave huge gap that don't make sense. Like, you know, plot all if you want and stuff like that like think like well how come like this exists in the world but people never like thought about doing that right using that mechanic that you introduce to the world or that that concept that you introduce to the world nobody thought of exploiting in that way and then you have to just justify that right just like but if you go if you try to make this whole original world you're gonna have those things coming up and then like you want to preserve your world so you have to make a posterior like on the fly basically explanation if you just build the world as you go you don't include you don't you don't uh, find you don't encounter the problem yeah i don't know if you know what you get what i mean i, I want to say a thing about the term zero prep as well uh it, it literally started as a meme term i think crossface was the first one that just like tweeted like zero prep supremacy and then we just kind of like adopted that on the gilded server. As, like, I don't think it's a new term, but I, I've I've heard no. it for many many years. It's yeah, just sure being popularized from, recently. I'm sure, I'm sure he got it from somewhere, but uh, we kind of adopted it as a term for like our play philosophy that you know that that that, that we're discussing now. And we started just chatting about it on Twitter, and it just kind of took on a life on its own because people got mad and they started arguing with us and all this stuff. But like, Fair. it's not like we were like some think tank that was just like, okay, guys, <laughs> we're doing this and we need a good name for. It. like oh let us oh zero zero something like no it was just like a thing that just started as like a log and it just took a life on its own so hey like, no like, prep yeah, yeah, yeah. Prep. all right let's uh let's hit some chats here actually before i hit uh the chat by the way i just want to remind folks that if we make a hundred dollars in super chats we will have a giveaway to drive through rpg or palladium books for a hundred dollars because we have maxed that out um uh, Anything else I want to say about that? Oh, and uh, I have beer, so you don't have to try to get me drunk with a $50 Super Chat. Uh, anyway, let me put this up here. Uh, sorry, Victor. I'll, you can show it again in a second. My bad. Uh, <laughs> Charity We Support is the Wounded Warrior Project, a national nonpartisan organization whose mission is to honor and empower wounded warriors. Please refer to the video's description for the link to where you can make your hopefully tax-deductible donation. And there will be a 24-hour uh, Veterans Day live stream. Actually, what's the date today? Ooh, this video may or may not be before then. I'm not sure. But we are going to have a 24-hour Veterans Day live stream where Heathen Dog is going to run Paranoia 2nd Edition. I bet you there's some prep involved in that. And uh, I'm going to talk to some people, and if it gets boring or whatever, I'll play a video game. I don't know. But uh, we're going to do that this year. We have made the least money we've ever made for the Wounded Warrior Project this year so far, so I hope we get to make it up on Veterans Day. I'll jump on the, those are always fun so yeah <laughs> you know they get weird <laughs> yeah so all right let's uh let me hit some of this chat where did i put it chat there you go Oop. so we had crafties already up there uh, i think you can do it as a campaign i intentionally place foreshadowing hooks into zero prep sessions that's prep sir <laughs> not not if you come them if you come up with them on the spot and then maybe yep. they will apply uh, a month down the line who knows but and some, sometimes it's just like a throwaway command by somebody yeah. that as a GM, you say, you know what? I'll fucking bring that back later, right? And then you take a note. But it's not prep because it's happening during the session. Even yeah. though you're going to use in a further down in session further down the line, mm -hmm. it's still something that has been done at the table where yeah. is where we should play the game, right? <laughs> Maybe a player goes like, oh, I don't trust that bartender. I think he's a cultist. And then you as a GM is like, well, I wasn't planning any cultists in this town, but maybe in the next exactly. town, who knows? <laughs> or that's a good idea. No, I, I, yeah. I absolutely get that. Uh, I one of the things that I do with my players, if it's a fantasy setting, is I let them come up with wives' tales, and whether they're true or not is something they can choose to investigate. Does a yeah. leprechaun actually? I'm sorry. At the at the end of a rainbow, is there a leprechaun with a pot of gold? Yeah, it's called Paddy's Parlor. <laughs> it's called Paddy's Parlor. <laughs> there you go. Paddy's Parlor games. Check him out on Rumble. Uh, but. Uh, but the point is, is like they can come up with stuff like that. Please don't copy real world ones, but at the same time, hey, maybe it's real, maybe it's not. It's your choice if you want to try to investigate it or not and waste the time. Uh, 
Over here we have uh, Dolly Pop. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time, Dolly Pop. But I don't know. Some of the most fun games have had come from no prep. And that's no, what I was man. saying before. Some, some of our most memorable sessions come from things that there's just no way you could have prepped for. Whether it's an entire session, uh, like uh, we've talked about the Earth Dawn one where poor Chris lost his character because <laughs> Ethan Dog cut the rope. Or if it was... Uh, oh, <laughs> Chris again. This is weird. Why is it the same guy every time? Uh, we call him Palsy Bear because, you know, some bad medical roles happen and I had to like, I wasn't even expecting there to be medical roles. Yada, yada. You just, you know, some of that improv or impromptu or extemporaneous concepts, yeah, lead to the most fun and most memorable uh, adventures or or incidences. Yeah. No, all my all my favorite memories are stuff that just happened from like random walls or just randomness in general. Yeah, so that, that's why we roll the dice. Like you know, yeah. I don't like rolling dice for literally every little thing that happens. But if you don't, if the if the outcome is uncertain and if the outcome, success or failure, is meaningful, roll yeah. the dice and then yeah, absolutely accept what the dice say. And man, you can have some fun things come from that. Yeah. All right, and then the last comment. I didn't fully understand this, so maybe I got to read it slower. Maybe what do you guys do? Anyway, was the remark that I would summarize as, if you disagree, it's that you can't grasp it in reference to this stream, or was it in regard to common general discussion of this topic? Was I, that in chat? Know. Because I don't remember it. I think I, it was I, when I... Was yeah, I think so I think it was when I was said like some people just aren't going to get it, and so I just walk away from the conversation. It oh, wasn't. Okay. In, yeah. It wasn't in response to you in particular. I don't. Know and it's not. It's not only just about like the zero prep thing. That's about like any kind of fucking thing, right? Just like... yeah. And any any role playing discussion will get uh, horrible disagreements, and people just refuse oh, yeah, yeah. to see a point. Yeah. And some people so, are just fucking thick, man. Yeah. Well, so no, it wasn't wasn't uh, an echo in particular. It was just a general thing. And, and let's be honest. There's nothing wrong with being passionate. I've got a whole bunch of rant videos in the past. There's nothing wrong with being a fan, which is short for fanatic. There's nothing wrong with that. If you have a way that you think is better, you are more than welcome to say my way is better than your way, but you are going to have people that push back against you and you better be able to take it. That's just all it is, you know? So, and these guys here have people that push back against them and they take it and they dish back. That's just part of being a fan. That's part of being part of a hobby. Yeah. Sometimes people take it too far though. But it's also not like we're turning this into like some whole cultish philosophy. Like it's just a thing. Maybe that you should. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're already accused of being a cult for other reasons. I, so next I time you guys are on, I want to see robes. Yeah. Uh, books. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's go back up to Mr. Max Bavon here. Uh, so, what role does trust play in countering misconceptions about zero prep game mastering? Trust. Trust is primordial in the. Uh, you have to trust your player. Like, don't fucking like when you play, fucking play play a game with people you don't trust, right? People are gonna cheat on the dice and stuff like that, right? But also have to trust that we all there to this for the same kind of goal, right? And that's a big part of the four D thing, right? We want to discuss that, like you know, people want to play the game differently. That's fine, right? If you want to play like the game that's more like competitive, more like adversarial, where like the GM is gonna follow those rules to have balance and counter, and then they're gonna they're gonna present them to you and it's gonna try to kill you. Know, you know, that's fine, but you have to understand with the uh, or if you just want to have like a beer and pretzel game and just have fun with your friend, that, that's also fine, right? But it's better, it works better if everybody understands that's the goal of what we're doing and we're all here for the same goal. We're all here for the same, trying to achieve the same thing together, right? And that's, and for me, like trusting the player, that's a big part of that as well, right? That's a big part of like, uh, I don't I don't want to, I don't want to play with people that I have to double check their dice roll. I don't have to, are they going to lie on their hit point or the, 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 the skill that they take, right? Because in a sense that add to my role as a GM a lot. And then I'm not there to be a fucking kindergarten teacher, right? <laughs> and, you know, I'm not there to, I'm, I'm not, I'm there to play a game with you, right? Just like, so, and we all have to self-police in a way. And it's the same thing with the, if you want to inject stuff in the game and stuff like that, like I have to trust you that you won't try just to win the scenario, right? If you do that, you're not, you're not, you're not understanding what we're trying to do here, right? If you just try to have your character win, right? Just like, no, what the win with the win condition we're looking for as a group is to maintain the reality of the world of this alternate reality that we're creating together, so have something that is consistent and have something that's interesting, right? Just like, so 
we need to be able to trust each other in that. Mm -hmm. I, it's hard for me to answer any of these prepared follow-up questions for you because I know how much you curate your tables. So I'm going to try this one, though. I think you kind of already answered it. Uh, what do you say to critics who argue that zero prep game mastering diminishes the quality of immersion, storytelling, verisimilitude, et cetera? Oh, yeah, I did, I did, I did touch about it a, a bit, right? Like, yeah. because, like you say, when, when you do a lot of prep and you try to create all this world, like, imagine if you were going to see a movie, right? And before the movie start, they have to have half an hour where they present you like all about the world and stuff like that. Like most movies don't do that, right? Some movie may do that, but it's usually like thrown upon, right? Oh, this is how the world works. No, you discover it as the movie play, right? And then you just go along and say, oh, okay, no, I get it. It's all like show don't tell. Like, no, I get it. This is how things are. All right, I move on. And now I include that in my in my further understanding. Like it's the same thing you do in the role-playing table, right? When you do like all this prep and stuff like that, like I gave the example earlier with the name of the week, right? If you say like, oh no, the name of the week, like the week is divided in a 15 day once in a while, but like once every other week and the next week is only five days. So it's 20 days for two weeks, but you know, and you start like making something like that. Like, I don't want, I don't care about that. Like the game is about character. It's about character interacting with each other their motivation, their goal, the conflict that they have among each other, like character, player character, and NPCs, right? That's all the same. And conflict that they have with themselves when they're in a situation where they have to weigh the pros and cons. So that, that's, that, well, that's where the juice is. The game is not about the lore. The game is not about the world. The world is a place for the character to evolve in. The character are not a vehicle to, to, for you as a GM to show off your world, right? That's an important thing that people need to, and that's something that I, we're talking about, like of Crafty was mentioning the gross nerd habit before. That's a gross nerd habit. You create this world that you think is so cool and stuff like that, and now you want to showcase it to your player, right? So you're going to take them on a ride. Don't do that. You have to go to this city because you've never been there before, and I spent 30 pages on it. You don't want to exactly. go there. Too bad, you're going there anyway. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't do that, right? Because that's not gonna help the immersion. Because now you're putting the play on rail, and then you just have you just like doing lordom after lordom. Nobody cares about that. Like nerds tend to care about this thing because they want to know the fact. They want to know like how many bolts and rivet have been used to build this fucking starship, this imperial destroyer class, whatever. Right? They care about this fact. Well, I just that people don't. But so. you know what? What I found is that nerds, and I'm I'm sure myself included, you know, on certain aspects, when they represent something. If you're an expert in it, you know, if you if you're an expert in firearms and somebody does something wrong, fire no, that, that's not how they work. Yeah. Or we have we have this friend, I joke about this all the time, but we have a friend who actually works and fixes lasers. So he cares about the makeup, you know. Is it a chemical laser? Is it a light laser? Is it red? Is it green? Is it blue? Nobody cares. It goes pew pew. No, no, no. I need to know, you know, and that's not how it works. Or uh, you know, a historian friend of mine really gets angry when people say chain mail. There's no such thing as chain mail, it's mail, M-A-I-L-L-E. Who cares? Who okay. cares? Exactly. You know, but that, but that's, but here's the thing: is people are going to do that. I actually saw it on your gilded today. <laughs> Somebody yeah. had an armor. Uh, I wouldn't call it a spurg. It's the the point is is that when people are in, intellectual, so especially if you get somebody who's a historian, yeah, that you got to get this historically right. Otherwise, what is wrong with you? Most of us don't do all of that. And you can okay. have those conversations. Those can be fun, like as a conversation where you talk about stuff like that. But when we're playing the game, we're trying to achieve something. It's not the time. Like set that aside, yeah. like for some some other time, right? Don't, well, don't I'm like really into that. guns, and like you know, I like yeah. my guns to be realistic and stuff like that. But if I'm playing a good. game, <laughs> no, if, I'm, if I'm playing a game where it's like more like John Wooish, and like my Beretta never runs out of ammo, I'm just gonna go with it because yeah. that's what that setting is, you know. So that's yep. And you know, to me, and I'm not trying to derail here, but I always believe that setting trumps everything. So, or setting informs. Maybe I shouldn't say it trumps, but it informs everything. So, all right, let's uh, let's drop down to you, Victor. Here to the yeah. bottom row. <laughs> what <laughs> what role does trust play in countering misconceptions about zero prep GMing? Um, well, it's like Mr. Max said, you have to trust uh, your players. Like, why are you playing with people that you don't trust? Uh, they, they, you should all be on like you know the same wavelength. They should enjoy the same kind of settings that you that you are running and all that stuff um as far as people online goes and this kind of goes into your follow-up question i don't really care if they trust me or not um if, well if you, you get a different follow-up question what are you talking about 
Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> fair enough. No, but if if you if you if you don't believe me that zero that you know the way uh, you know a more more zero prep game can still have a satisfying narrative driven like immersive game and only your way where you write like you know your novel beforehand uh, accomplishes that. Okay, well we have nothing to argue about. Like I, I'm not gonna waste too much time convincing you. You're just some vendor on Twitter, and uh, you can try it. You 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 can leave it as is. Like I don't know, move along. So. Yeah. So, um, how do you handle feedback from players who have misunderstood the zero prep approach? Um, well, I think that's something you should establish with your players, though. Like that, this is the way you're going to run the game, and this is, and then they should know beforehand that that's that is the expectation, and that uh, the expectation is that, that they're gonna take care of their own path in, in, in the game. They're not going to just be spoon-fed some story. It's like, oh, okay, now you're going to go over here and kill the wizard. Like, no, you're in the middle of the wilderness. What do you do? And uh, they just need to know that beforehand. So, and then so, if so, they, yeah, if the first session there's a misunderstanding, you just calmly handle it. And if they don't like it, they can leave. One, one of my pet peeves, and this is whether I'm a game master or a player, I hate it when game masters stop the game because, you know, we're about to have an encounter. Okay, I gotta, I gotta look this up. I gotta look up what this creature does. Drives me fucking crazy. Pardon me, I'm not supposed to be cussing as much anymore on this, but whatever. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry I, I don't make it a, a rule, but yeah, we're, I've, I've had some people complain in the backgrounds. Love your stuff. I think these are great topics, but you know, I can't have my kids watch it. I'm like, eh. <laughs> it's still Friday though. Anyway, with that, with that said, um, is that is one of the so like for the zero prep. Instead of having a D20 roll, I actually knock it down to a D6 roll and make my own chart for that one. So it's still going to be random, but I know those six creatures I can read through and know no matter where it happens on you know, during the adventure, I can I can plan for them. I can utilize them. I can't do it so well for 20. And like I said, I, I despise. So the, the reason why I'm saying this, that doesn't mean that anybody who does it differently, because I think it's actually pretty common for people to stop the aim. Okay, get the battle maps out, do whatever you're doing, you know, so forth, for people to do that. I just personally don't like it. So, so for the purposes of the question, Victor, I say all that. So if I were to give you that kind of feedback and say, you know, dude, I think your game's great. The zero prep thing's working. The only thing that's irking me is that we stop every single time that there's an encounter. It's like it kind of yeah. ruins the flow. Uh, well, then I will either explain, like, well, sorry, I enjoy that kind of like having a map and minis and stuff. And that, yeah, that's sorry. That takes like a minute to set up. Okay. Or, or I will listen to you and I'll think about it. It's like, you know what? I can probably also run this more theater of the mind. He's right. And then, you know, I adjust my game style for the next session. Like, you know, that's just normal adult behavior, I, I think, either way. So, sure. Yeah. Uh, so, so I'm going to put this chat up real quickly. I hate, I'm, I'm, I hate battle maps. I am very much theater of the mind. If yeah. I use maps, they're abstract. Uh, just to give you an idea, because maybe I didn't describe it as well as I'd hoped I did. So here's the hill, here's the river, here's what's going on over here. But I hate, can I move seven squares? I, oh, I hate that. God, I hate that. Did you have this uh, talk already? Battle map versus theater of the mind. Um, I don't know. No, I think it's a subject that's coming up later on. Also, these days, though, if you if you have like knowledge of like how to roll, how to use roll twenty or like sure. or whatever, it doesn't take all that long if you know what you're doing. All right. Well, let's uh, let's pop on over to the basic expert here. Ask him the same primary question: What role does trust play in countering misconceptions about zero prep gaming? I want to go a different route because both guys have already talked about trusting your players. And I think that you want to build trust as a GM that you're fair. You're using the rules because uh, you have your, the goal of zero prep is you're, you're using the rules to simulate the world and you're not going to both pull punches on the player and make things overly easy for them because it's like, Oh no, this is going to be a TPK. Uh, but you also uh, that you're not out to get them either, that you're just this fair arbitrator that's there to like, adjudicate the rules of the world and the setting but also the rules of the game itself so i think that uh building that trust with trust with players um that they can trust you as the referee and that you're going to be a referee that you're going to be a game master that you're going to be impartial and you're going to be like that's what you want to do all right well let's use the rules let's do whatever and let's let's figure out how this is going to be adjudicated and what the outcome is and you know because that's that's going to make it so that they want to be more proactive players as well because they know that they can try something and you're going to do your absolute best to be fair about what the outcome is going to be. 
So I would say that that would be um, really important there as well, that you're you're going to be trustworthy and, play, uh, and fair towards the players. Yeah. All right. I started with Vic on this one, right? Yeah, I should have. So um, how do you demonstrate? Yeah, I started with me. Yeah, huh? I started with Max. Did I? Max, yeah. yeah. No, nope, actually, you're right. It should. I just didn't write it down. Good. Thank you. Um, so, and this is for the basic expert. How do you demonstrate the effectiveness of zero prep game uh, game mastering to new or hesitant players? Um, sometimes I I've done it where I didn't tell them I was zero. I didn't. I'm just making it up. And in some, you know, at the end of the game, at the night, you know, like, oh, that was a lot of fun, John. That thanks for that game session. You know, like, oh, I just made it all up as I went along. So. <laughs> You know, and they're sort of like, what? You know, like, I don't prep anything. Um, I think that's a good way of doing it because honestly, if people are having fun at their table, they can't tell the difference. I'll, I'll mm -hmm. be honest. You know, yeah. they, if they're having a good time, they're not, they're not going to be able to tell the difference. Um, but I, I think also being transparent and if they're interested, let's say that they're like, I'm interested in how you run games. Can you explain to me how you do it? You can you know, talk to them about it during the game and be like, okay, I'm going to roll for the random encounter. Um, you know, I'm, hold on. I'm, I'm going to, I know you don't like this, but it's like, I'm, real quick, I'm going to roll in the Appendix A to see what the next room is in the dungeon. Okay, it's this, and there's a monster and treasure in it, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to describe it to you. Um, you. You can go that route, but I think it's just having people experience it. So probably the biggest thing too is when the player suggests something and you don't tell them no, necessarily. Like they're like, I want to try and, um uh it, I, I have this goal and i made it up right now that i want to pursue and i want to pursue it and the rest of the party maybe is like yeah let's do it and you're like all right let's go let's do it and then when you go and do it and they have a good time and now they're invested because they're pursuing a goal that they care about uh i, I think that that shows the merits of it and the and the proof of it as well where they're like oh okay like my my choices matter in the in this game world like i'm going i can suggest that i'm going to do something and i'm going to be able to do it now the outcome might not be what i imagined um you know but but i can pursue so, so I'm, pursue I'm hearing thing. what you're saying there and i'm just curious i have to ask sorry for interrupting but uh this sounds like that in this case zero prep and sandbox just go hand to hand i would say uh, okay so you can prep a sandbox you know mm -hmm. um uh, there's like a Venn diagram, right? And there's a lot of overlap sure. I think, between the two because you can have a very high prep sandbox where you have everything planned out. And so you can lay everything in front of the players and like, we're going to go to this village and you know everything about that village, you know? Um, but you can also do the zero prep way where it's still a sandbox. I, I, cause I would agree you, you run zero prep as a sandbox game, you know, in my opinion, in an exploration based game, like Dungeons and Dragons. Well, that's what I said earlier, even like, like I think that is the best method to run a zero prep game, uh, a sandbox, and it could be a, a wilderness sandbox, it could be a city sandbox, it could be fantasy, it could be modern, it could be sci-fi. Uh, Traveler is very sandboxy, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a really good zero prep game, in my opinion. Uh, it's 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 a lot more harder if you're just like in a single neighborhood and it's like we have to investigate this murder. Okay, yeah. <laughs> like now we say we'll prep it from here. Like that is a lot. That is a lot harder. So I think you can do it, but yeah, you're but, like but you're, you're pretty good at. Yeah, yeah, you're pretty good at like if you're yeah. like oh, okay, I'm going to zero prep a Call of Cthulhu investigation. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's pretty, awesome. pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. awesome if you can do that. <laughs> yeah. Mystery game my favorite to zero prep. Like I, you know, I come in with a premise. I don't know where the solution is. We discover it together. <laughs> like because I hate in, when people do mystery game. I hate when the game become about like. It's not about solving a mystery and investigating and role playing. It's about like guessing what the GM thought of, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. Yeah, and I hate that. You know, it's like no. You, oh, you I, don't I, like oh, it I, when I, when game masters use puzzles just to try to show that he's a Mensa student or something. And <laughs> no, exactly. No, I fucking hate that. Right. So do I. I want to be immersed in the wall and stuff like that. I don't want to yeah. think about like, oh, I know, I know Liao, man. Like he probably like talked about that. Like he probably thought that was clever, or he's trying to trick us. So he's probably gonna do like the reverse psychology kind of stuff. Like I'm not playing a game anymore. I'm not immersed in my character. I'm not seeing the world through the eyes. Doesn't that seem adversarial to you? Yes, it does, and I hate it. So, and I love mystery game, but for me, mystery game because I'm I'm very much an advocate of zero prep. I just say you don't make a mystery game. You run a game, and mystery happen. Yeah. Oh, something exactly. here. No, it's a mystery. Yeah. The player went to uh, went to investigate it. Yeah, we'll fucking make it out as we go. Yeah, like okay. a zero prep Call of Cthulhu game could be like your travelers, and you ended up with Insmith. 
and, the, yeah. and then then some weird mystery happens. A fish man murders somebody, and now you have to investigate it. Like, <laughs> like you know, so, yeah. <laughs> it happens all the time in Innsmouth. That's not a mystery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's notorious. <laughs> Nobody got away with it. It wasn't for you kids. Mm -hmm. All right, anything you guys want to wrap up this segment uh, on in terms of uh, trust and uh, what was this about, misconceptions? Well, you can't trust me. I'm Dutch, so, I mean. No, I don't worry, that'll be put it. in the description. Yeah. I, think I, I think I said what I what I yeah. okay. need to say. Yeah. And, like, to, to build up on, like, what uh, John was saying, like, earlier, too, like, you know, it's like, it's like you know, sometimes, like, you feel like you, you get this discourse. Like, it's like somebody comes and say, oh, nobody can go swim in the water. And just, like, we're just there, like, swimming having fun splashing around and say no that's impossible that doesn't work and it's like well all right then and you're just like but can you cross the ocean like well no there's a limit <laughs> it's like but you know don't be fucking stupid yes you can swim and some other people are gonna be on the beach and say well that looked fun can you show me how to do it yes come on in right just like that's you know don't be that guy that some people are doing something and you're just like saying like oh that's impossible to do it doesn't work right like this, the world is full of those people right they, they complain that somebody can, cannot cannot be done while other people are busy doing it. Okay. Well, our next video, our next segment, is going to end the actual challenges and obstacles of zero prep jamming. That's right. The, they have to admit that there is a struggle. Okay, maybe that's too strong of a word, but I'm going with it. <laughs> that's, yeah. So we'll see what, what things can get in the way of Zero Prep Game Mastering in the next segment. But first, let's read a couple chats. This is a weird day. There are literally no Super Chats today. I guess nobody wants to win. Nobody wants Venger's book. That's what it is. Nobody wants Venger's book. Mm. Oh. <laughs> uh, for those who missed the beginning of the stream, Venger Satanis uh, sent me a message saying that anybody who donates $5 or more gets a free PDF of his uh, Shadow Ch Alt. Now, he didn't say anything else after that, so I don't know how to coordinate that with him, but that's between you and him. has nothing to do with me. I'm just advertising it out there so that he gets his little shout-out and so forth. Check out Shadow Ch Alt on uh, Drive Through RPG if you're not sure what it is. So in the meantime here, Kevin Yu says, also, I'm really glad to see the basic expert on here. I've become a fan of his channels lately. I love the Star Wars West End game D6 content. Now, before you say oh, thanks, thank you, next year in 2025, we're covering it, and I'm going to do better. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, please do do better. I made mistakes and stuff still, too. You know, so I, We're I, just doing I, our read-through of it, so... Welcome That's... someone doing better than me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I, no. It was good stuff. Actually, I watched some of it. I didn't watch uh, all of it, but I watched some of it, and I thought it was good. I was happy somebody covered West End Games D6, and that's why next year, not because of him. In fact, you did yours, what, two years ago? Something like that, yeah. It was yeah. Um, so it's been a while ago, Yeah, but uh, you know we're doing a lot of older stuff next year, and I'm looking forward to it. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Check out the Basic Experts channel and check out his Star Wars D6 uh, content. I think you'll like it. You know, you know, everyone always says they love his videos. Nobody ever says they love natural ones. So I always feel left out. It's like, people like natural ones. Ones. Yeah, but natural on. ones is the name of a show. I go by channels. Yeah. It's like nobody says that they like RPG Digest. They say, you know, they yeah. like Legion of Myth. And nobody ever says, like, oh, Victor, he, he's cool. He's like, you know, that Dutch guy, he's, he has some hey, cool hey, things to say. We have some viewers of natural ones that particularly love that he says he says his favorite part of natural ones is when Vix shields his stuff. So yeah, I mean that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, that reminds me, I have to buy the new Atomic Punk, but we can get into that later. Um, and this time I mean it. You know, I was going to buy the last one, but then you said you're working on another one. I'm like, well, then I'll wait. And so I'm going to get this one. Uh, so Gunther the Mad, thank you very much for $10. Says, fine, I'll be the first. We are now 10% of the way to a giveaway. This would be the first stream that we didn't have a giveaway in months if we don't meet it. So, mm. You know, that can happen. You know, John, and, I think you might be like one of the RPG creators that I have the most game of from. Me? Yeah, because cool. I got your uh, car puncher. I got uh, Macquitical, Macquitical, macaroni, Macquitical, and I have uh, and I have Atomic Punk, the, awesome. the original version. <laughs> cool. Well, there we go. And Dolly Pop says the thing, uh, the thing is, it's impossible to prep for anything that could possibly catch the party's attention. You can't prepare for every possibility. So personally, I tend to prep for nothing. Uh, it seems like a defeatist attitude to me. I think you're weak and you're defeating. Like, oh, I'm just if I can't do everything, I, I won't do anything. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but but no, the point that I'm taking out of this is you're right. Players are going to do some crazy stuff that you just won't plan for. You've got to, whether you're zero prep, all prep, some prep, no prep, give me the prep. I don't know. 
at some point you're going to have to do some sort of improv or dancing on your feet or whatever the hell it is to try to figure out how you can yeah. get through what the characters have done. And I agree with that. And, uh, you know, yeah, you maybe that is a, water. what's that? You have to get in the water, right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Patty's parlor game says, I love natural ones when you guys aren't recovering from cri cripple. Oh my God. I cannot read. Let me just put it on the screen. Cause apparently I don't know how to read. Where is it? Boop. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm always, yeah, my yeah. child's always just sharing sicknesses with me. So I just barely got over like a, I think I had the flu early this week. So kid, fun. just wait, wait till your kid goes to school. That's a petri well, dish, baby. She is. That's where she is. She's in. Oh, she's okay. In, she's in pre K. So yeah, gotcha. <laughs> they don't. They're learning to wash hands, and uh, we're feeling <laughs> the effects. So. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's move on to the next. Se oh, actually, I've got to throw this up so I can timestamp it better. So there we go. If you enjoy this discussion, please like this video, subscribe to all the panelists' channels, which you can find in the description, along with a link to um, to Avengers game if you want to check that out. By the way, Gunther the Mad, who sent in that super chat, contact Venture. I don't know. He didn't get back to me about how he's going to do his. Uh, giveaway thing whatever you want to call it but he did send me a message saying that anybody who donates five dollars or more gets a free copy of his pdf of shadow Chal, if that uh, is of interest to you 